My name's Julian McDonnell, and this week I'm going to be eating lots of food, drinking lots of wine, and doing lots of little trips on mopeds. Yes, I'm in Italy. It's a hard life sometimes. Ah, Julian. Oh, there you are. Excellent. Come start. Okay, bene. Uh, my friend Massimo is always going on about how amazing it is in Sicily. So we finally decided to come out here and check it out for ourselves. Just finish off this delightful breakfast. Grazie mille, arrivederci. Now we've based ourselves in the town of Cefalu, just outside Palermo, because my mate Massimo has quite a few of his rental villas here, and he wanted me to check out the area. What I love about Cefalu is all these wonderful cobbled streets and windy passages with all the authentic Sicilian laundry hanging out on people's balconies. It's brilliant. And it makes you feel like you're in some sort of Turkish bazaar or something. And it's hardly surprising, actually, because over the years, Sicily has been invaded by so many different people that they've all left their mark. The Greeks have been here, the Romans, the Turks, the Bourbons, whoever they are. Even let the Italians take over eventually. Spectacular views of the craggy, overhanging mountain and medieval fortress on top, and a cathedral, which I think they're very proud of, but don't take my word for it. Let's ask Angelo, who actually lives here. in Italian? Biscotto di mandorla. Biscotto di mandorla. This is the main street, and the architecture is just a main street, and then the two streets close to the cathedral are specifically designed. From the bottom of the street, you can see the tower of the cathedral. It's like a sign, you know, that God is everywhere. All right. <laughs> the cathedral is the pride of Cefalu and was built in the year 1131, after Sicily had been conquered by the Normans. And it's famous for its total mix of Arab and Norman and other architectures. So the, the, bottom the bottom half, half that looks it, a bit it like looks a, completely different than like the, the Tower top. of London. But what Angelo is really proud of is the mosaic uh, of Jesus Pantocrator inside one of the most famous in all of Italy. There is another one, which is in Monreale Cathedral, close boo. to Palermo. Boo. boo. Yeah. We don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> exactly, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but our mosaic is much more better of than course. the other one. <laughs> Watching his face is really represented as a human being, and it's very nice. Comparing with the one in uh, Monreale, uh, the one in Monreale, is, it doesn't have humanity. It's more cold, let's say. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Norman King Roger died before he could finish building the cathedral, which is why it looks like a bit of a mishmash. Uh, so time by time, so Spanish and the Arabians and Byzantines and Greek. Bloody Norman builders. And the Normans and, and then almost everybody. Conveniently, just down here, there's a medieval wash house. And as it happens, I got a quite a smelly shirt that I wore on the journey yeah. here, so I'm going to wash that. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> oh, <right>. um, <laughs> but, uh, this is the oldest laundry washing, washing machine of the world. <laughs> the water comes from an underground river called the Cefalino, straight from the surrounding hills, and is a very cold, sweet water that runs down into the sea, just behind Paganini over there. I wouldn't recommend drinking it, though. You probably think that the man here playing music from The Godfather on the violin is making an absolute fortune, but I feel a bit sorry for him because everyone's just throwing their money into the fountain. So <laughs> I wonder if he goes and picks it out afterwards. It's not so likely, yeah. The old women during the past, they were uh, washing the clothes on the stone in, the, in yeah. this particular system. Oh, yeah, this one looks like it's got a nice steady stream. Uh, so I suppose what you'd do is you'd take your shirt like this and... Uh, Grab a handful of coins which are in there while you're at it. And I suppose this is what this is for. You probably rub it onto here. Yeah. Oh, this is your job, Simon. What am I bloody doing this for? <laughs> I'm director. I like my whites whiter than white, even at 40 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> I think it's actually more dirty than before. Not bad. Oh my God. It's a tumble dryer. <laughs> a medieval tumble dryer. Yes. Funny you should mention that because uh, actually I've got just the place to dry this, which is quicker than a tumble dryer. This beats the laundrette down a local high street in London. <laughs> Feel authentic now. <laughs> Excellent. Perfetto. Grazie. Ah, oh, what could be better than a refreshing cocktail? by the beach, accompanied by this cheesy music. It's fantastic. The great thing about Cefalu is it's got one of the most beautiful beaches in the whole of Sicily. You can take a stroll along the golden sand, see the snogging couples, surfers, bronzed lifeguards, beautiful women and men of a certain age proudly parading in famously tiny swimming trunks. I must say, you've got to admire their balls. Sicily's also famous for its incredible food. So we're off to pick up Nancy Jung 
who's a proper food blogger and wine expert, but most importantly, she has a slightly more sophisticated palate than mine. Start for the race. Oh, I don't need a helmet or anything. No. Okay, <laughs> nice Vespa for about 25 euros for half a day in the old town, but it won't be as stylish as Marco's set of wheels. Make sure you've got travel insurance. <laughs> the shape of Trepalu, watch from a far distance, it looks like a snail. It is, yes, it's yeah. shaped like a snail. Yeah. I like that. It's a very comfortable way to get around town, but Marco's scooter is a bit more like a car, really. It has, <laughs> has the turning circle of an ocean liner. <laughs> Tutto bene! Ciao bella! Oh, I'm going to not... take this you massive this, baggage here. We can deliver the, the <laughs> size of that suit. You can really drive that yeah. like that. Ciao Simon! Ciao! I live in Istanbul at the moment. I'm a food tour guide. So basically I walk around eat and introduce food and I've heard about Sicilian cuisine for a long, long time and I've been really looking forward to coming here and try all the lovely food. What we want is something just to, to stave off the hunger till later. And the perfect thing, I've heard tell, is arancini. I'm going to um, the focaccia shop, one of the oldest. But they also have that arancini there. Yeah, and looked really good, that's why I'm going back. Let's go check I have out. a food instinct. <laughs> Buongiorno. You can really feel this crunchiness. All the other places I've tried, they, they microwave this and then they get soggy. Check out the goodness in there. Would you prefer that or a hamburger, right, or a kebab? I really like this because, yeah. well, I really like rice anyway. Look, really, really crispy. <laughs> it's like a scotch egg. Yeah. This is the other type we can get, which is the, which is the meat one. I actually like the cheese one better, but uh, both of them are delicious. It's really good, as I expect. It's exactly what I expected. The really crunch outside is really nice. Well, we've been here a couple of days and it's great. There's plenty to do in Chefalu all year round. But September is the time for the harvesting of the grapes. And our guide and friend and general all-round good egg, Angelo, is going to take us to the Santa Anastasia vineyard. So hopefully we get to try even more wine. <laughs> you up for some more wine? <laughs> oh. Ciao. Ciao. Good morning, gentlemen. Ah, Marco and Nancy. Are you ready for your trip to the vineyard? Yeah. So we're going to see all the procedures for the wine making. So, Julian, if you have already an empty glass... <laughs> and we, hopefully we need, we're going to try we need, some. Of course we're going to try some. White wine, red wine. There are absolutely acres of vines. There aren't actually any grapes on the vine at the moment because they've just done the harvest, but we're going to head up to the winery. Immediately, the smell of wine and grapes just hits you as you walk through, and hardly surprising, really. Now, I know absolutely nothing about wine, so any questions and everything, I'm going to have to leave to Nancy. <laughs> I just clearly want to get in and try some of it out. No, I, I wasn't listening. What was he talking about? The most impressive thing was that thing on top of the barrel. The glass yeah. part allows wine to escape when the temperature changes to avoid it turning into vinegar. How much is inside here? 10,000 litres. 10,000 litres of wine. That's enough. We'll take this one, please. <laughs> I've left my wallet on. Well, look, I knew I was going to like it, but if it passes the Nancy test, then I can start to relax. What will your wife say? <laughs> Getting drunk on the smell alone. It's not wine. It's grape juice. It's like... Great That's twist Before the alcoholic fermentation, before going into the barrel, it's a pure grape. Yeah. It's a fantastic. That's really nice grape juice, yeah. I feel like Charlie when he's being taken around the chocolate factory. There's all this stuff that I feel I shouldn't really be touching just in case I contaminate it. Do basta così? No, tutto. Cheers. <laughs> This is like your baby, to a bambino, questo. Ah, he has many children. 
This is a very uh, citrusy wine. Um, oh, I got it right. Oh. <laughs> Total guess. This definitely gets a smiley face. Today, we're going to go for a boat trip with Marco. I don't know if it's his boat. He's so stylish, is Marco. He's just going to come straight around this bend. Julian, I'm going today to borrow a boat. Come on, do you reckon that's him? Surely not. <laughs> it's really lovely, this little spot. I can imagine it being where lovers meet along here. And so many of these lots must have a romantic story behind them. I think this is where they put all the chairs out at the end of Cinema Paradiso and they projected the screen up to one of those buildings over there. It really does feel very atmospheric with that lovely rock overhanging. Probably hasn't changed ever like this town, has it? <laughs> many, many years. <laughs> Marco! We'll come down here. Thank You're you, welcome, thank sir. you, sir. So how far do we go? Where are we? Uh... We're gonna explore the cave there. Inside the cave, there is a, a secret, yeah, a secret coast, and there is a awkward hole inside where you can get in, but you can't find the way out. This is good. Well, I'm pretty good at negotiating awkward holes. This? Yeah. It's for uh, my life football. Yeah. yeah which, which team? team? My team, my team, uh, Inter Milano, you know? Inter Milano. Inter Milano, yeah, okay. Off she goes, into a secret beach, hidden. What wonders await then? It's very, very beautiful. This cave is called St. Lucy, and during the war, this woman called Lucy came running in here with enemy soldiers chasing her, probably English I expect. She clambered up through that hole and made good her escape. Why is she a saint? Gould knows. But it's a lovely cave. Rosario's lived here for 30 years and he's never been in there. Uh, yeah. Wow. We're in a really beautiful spot here. This is uh, apparently 1989, the New York Times declared this the seventh most beautiful corner of the world. Excellent, Marco. Excellent, mate. Excellent. And just as we're heading back to get changed into our evening attire, as if by magic, the barman appears. Oh, go on then. Uh, you might be wondering what all these people are doing, just wandering around. They're not all tourists. They are, quite a lot of them live here. A passeggiata, we call it. Just walking, making shopping, and meeting friends, and chat a little bit before to go for a dinner. We make a passeggiata before and after. Okay. Oh, no, aspe, aspe, è possibile due gusti? Si. Si, okay. Per me, pistacchio e... Um, Torracciatella. Grazie. There he is. We've been trying to find him. He disappeared down an alleyway. What's this? This is a ridiculous. Look at the size of this. Oh man. Yeah, you can knock someone. You can <laughs> offer you a coffee, maybe. <laughs> a room with a view. <laughs> <laughs> this is somebody's front door. <laughs> it's hilarious. What do you do about a sofa delivery? Yes. <laughs> oh, and that actually brings us out right at our house. That's pretty handy. It's a nice quiet uh, evening here, and uh, what do you suggest we do for, the, for this evening? A typical Sicilian aperitif, so we can have a drink, eating some cheese, and local cheese, and salumi, and a pizza. Nice. Sounds all right by me. How about you, Simon? I'm, I'm very up for that. Wonderful. <laughs> Hot over here for you. It's good to me. And Grazie. Buona cena. We've been here for about four or five days now, as you can probably tell from the length of my stubble. But we've decided to come out of Cefalu and come for a day trip to Palermo. And it's immediately tangible, the difference is complete chaos here. I didn't quite catch that. What's the name of this market? Ballaro. Ballaro. One of the most important markets in Palermo. 
kind of like a competition. I think one guy sings out and the other one's trying to compete with him. So this is the real traditional Palermo street food, you know? There are two different kinds of street food. The worst part of the pork, let's say, the tongue, uh, the nose, the, which are boiled. Or you can have the stigiola, which are the interiors of the sheep or the cow, with onion and, uh, and prezzemolo. It's very good. Very strong taste, but it's good. It sounds, it sounds a bit It's very nice. <laughs> Like, you, think we should you don't them. have to see what you eat, just eat and join, it's very good, okay. very good taste. Thanks. So I'm going to have to send in our uh, celebrity taster, Nancy, because there's no way I'm trying that out. Miola, street food di Palermo, numero one. Terza generation. Terza generation, he means his third generation, his father, his father's father, his father's father's father, I could go farther. What do you make of that? Hot. It smells good. Hot. Careful. Make a picture, sir. Yeah, you can make a picture. Sir. But you have to eat also. Otherwise, what do you want to eat after the picture? <laughs> look, look. Mm. It's a big piece of fat on there. I just, I'm not sure about this. It tastes good, though. It's amazing. Spring yeah. onion and salt. It's simple, but it's nice. It's juicy. In Istanbul, we have a similar thing. All right. This is much better. Facciamo un giro. After a fine repast of pig's internal organs, we pass through the old historical centre of Palermo. And as a testament to the well-oiled machine that is Italian efficiency, there's a house that has remained exactly the same as when it was bombed in the Second World War. They haven't changed at all, yes. They just left as they were during the Second World War. Very strange. Due purely to an oversight on my part, I've only had one ice cream since I've been in Sicily. So I'm going to put that right, right now. Fragole cioccolato. Once you've eaten all the bits around the outside, if by some miracle you aren't completely stuffed, you are then supposed to squash this bit inside there and then you're supposed to eat it like a sandwich. Buono. It's a weird combination. Especially with the brioche. For us, yeah. that, I mean, that just seems weird, but... Uh, this is how you eat this brioche. Like a hamburger? Yeah. Like a hamburger. Not like that. It's not like that. Sorry, I'm supposed to... Yeah, and then you no, like... You no, don't try and hamburger. pretend that you did that yourself. Marco made that one for her. Mine looks like a hedgehog that's been run over. Something with his guts hanging out because I've made such a mess of it. Right up the other end of that street, at least from the crossroads, is the Teatro Massimo. This is the biggest theatre in Italy. It's got its renown for its amazing acoustics. It's actually one of the five biggest theatres in the world. I think it was built in the 19th century. In the final scenes of The Godfather Part 3, this is where he's, he, they film it, he's at the theatre. You know that, you know that scene? It's just when they thought I was... No, 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 no. no. That, that was another part of the film. That's the film where Pacino falls to his knees and he's completely emotional because his daughter has just been shot on the steps of this very opera house. Oh, right. Yes. Do you so, remember? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Fountain of shame over here. Piazza di Vergogna. If you look at some of the statues here, they're all looking a little bit modest, like covering themselves up. Look, she's covering up her breasts. What next, eh? Outrageous. In 1573, the Senate bought this beautiful fountain and wanted to show it off by placing it in this square. But in order to make way for it, they had to knock down a few houses, which wasn't very popular with the residents. So they ended up calling it the Square of Shame. I noticed the men aren't exactly that modest. The shame is that I don't know much about it. <laughs> of course, there's plenty more to see in Palermo, but we're only on a day trip, so we have to leave. About 20 kilometers outside Cefalu is Castel Buono, named after the castle, which was owned by the aristocratic Familia di Ventimiglia. Set high up in the hills and quite isolated, you'll be forgiven for thinking you've strayed onto the set of a movie. In fact, you might recognize this square. It was a square where uh, some part of normal cinema Paradiso was filmed. Yeah with a fountain in, in the middle, which is very nice, where the guy say, this is my square, this is my square, La Piazza Mia, the crazy guy. <laughs> you see the old people sitting here. I mean, you can see how the real traditional um, life in, in, in this small, in the old towns uh, used to be. 
all the people sitting just outside the shops or the house, doing almost nothing, just chatting by themselves, sometimes fighting, sometimes playing cards, sometimes uh, making gossip about uh, what's going on in the square. Uh, they, will, they will make some gossip about us now. They will say, oh, who they are, what they want. They are the best and the real Where newspaper the, of the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We don't buy newspaper, we just listen to them. Panettone. Now, now we're talking. In September. Okay. In general, it's strange, but uh, here it's very common and very famous. It's the panettone from Piasconaro. There is a percentage of minced meat yeah. to make this kind of... Minced kind of meat? Of, yes. In the chocolate? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, now this is manna and it's some sort of resin. Yeah, meringue. It's a bit like a meringue. Yes. But yeah. And basically, the main property of manna is its uh, strongest laxative. Laxative? Oh, now he tells me. Hmm, minced meat in the chocolate and laxatives. Cheers, Angelo. Should be an interesting drive back to Jeffalo. I really love this time of day when the sun is just falling on all the buildings behind there and you can see all the fishermen who have just come back from their fishing trip last night and they'll be selling all their fish in the street. It's so Ciao nice. Ciao! Ciao! Come here, That's a Sicilian wind sweeper. Slightly different from the Haringey Council way of doing things. Yeah, you'll have some massive <laughs> machine live <laughs> in the morning. Let go! That guy, you can hear him through all the streets here. And over here, there's this brilliant bloke who's been making fishing nets for years and years. He's excellent. Buongiorno. Come mi chiamo io? Si. Salvatore. Salvatore, ciao. Ciao. Piacere, Giuliano. Piacere, Giuliano. <laughs> Giuliano ce n'era uno bello in Sicilia. Fesce, polpi, seppi, aragoste. Eh. Sì. Quando hai comin cominciato, cominciato questo Andato, lavoro? Questo lavoro qua da piccolino. Piccolino, un bambino. 12 anni, piccolino, sì. Adesso ce n'ho 50, 25 anni fa però. Bravo. Oh, it's like his little grotto. Oh, it's so cute in here. Like an Aladdin's cave. But there he is, Salvatore. As a young man. It's quite a climb up this hill, but if you're feeling brave, around the other side of the big mountain and just next to the stadium is the house of the man who the English press called the wickedest man in the world. It's really creepy, actually. Wow, it's still here. I mean, no one's lived here for years. It's just all abandoned and still here. Alistair Crowley was born in 1875 and was an occultist, poet, and general weirdo who founded a religion called Thelema and considered himself to be the prophet who would lead the human race into the eon of Horus, whatever that is, in the 20th century. A bit like uh, Scientology. In fact, I think L. Ron Hubbard was inspired by him. He was certainly his friend anyway. And he's said to have inspired Aldous Huxley, David Bowie, the Beatles and honestly thought himself to be the Beast 666, as prophesied by John the Divine in the Book of Revelation. <laughs> An occultist, he was a painter, he was a mountaineer, and I think he was a double agent as well in the war. Let's go through the keyhole with Julesy. How do you get in? Do you want to try and clamber down there? I reckon that's the way in. Looks safe enough. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was just a weird kind of deviant. In his lifetime, he became a notorious bisexual drug experimenter and Satanist. And people would come to his house and do all sorts of weird sex experiments and stuff like that until Mussolini eventually just had him <laughs> expelled from Italy. The Temple of Thelema. Doesn't look like much of a temple to me. Who knows? Maybe there's someone in there now yeah. performing some performing ritualistic sort of sex. Bestiality. It is actually really dangerous to go in. I'm, I'm kind of reluctant, but... There we go. How did you get Oh, he's in. Okay. Be careful, Julian. Julian. Oh, he's a fool. It's really freaky inside here. It's hard to believe he used to live here with his weird followers until 1923 when the Italians finally had enough of him. It kind of feels like maybe his weird followers still come in here. Now, I must point out seriously at this point that we shouldn't be in here. That it's actually forbidden okay. to enter this site. I'm, oh, I'm already far too weirded out in here and it's horrible. It smells, and I feel it's a bit dangerous. Yeah, they've clearly closed it off for a reason in there. I just, Simon, don't knock anything with that big rucksack. I wouldn't go in. If you knock something, you might have the whole thing come down on top of you. This is a freaky place. Oh, 
I mean, they wore robes, performed rituals. He offered a sort of what they called a libertine education for the children of his followers and allowed them to play all day and witness acts of sex magic. He also said, I slept with faith and found a corpse in my arms on awakening. What a nutter. Yep, sounds like a nice guy. After that surreal experience, it's finally time to climb La Roca, the imposing mountain that's been taunting me ever since I arrived. Make sure you take some good footwear though, this is quite a long hike and you're definitely going to need water. Unless you are a camel, which I'm not. Although Simon does give me the hump sometimes. Looks easy enough. No problem. Come on. I'm back. I'm back. Sounds like you're off to get married with that music in the background. <laughs> Where's the bride? Look at these amateurs. They brought their flip-flops to climb La Roca. What are they thinking? Oh. Whose idea was this? After the fall of the Roman Empire, the people of Cefalu moved up the mountain for a bit of protection from the pirates like the Vandals and the Saracens. And around the 8th century, they started to build fortifications. Beautiful. I mean, I don't even know okay. why they bothered putting the fortifications in. There's no need. No one's going to climb all that. They'll be knackered after climbing up. You have to be pretty careful, though. That is a death fall yeah. down there. No fear. She has no fear. After a steep climb, we finally reach the Temple of Diana, a megalithic structure which we don't know much about, but it's really old, honest. Before the Greeks arrived, it was apparently used for the ancient pagan worship of water. Greek lintel and columns here, aren't they? The door, the door frame. Yeah. This wasn't put in by O'Reilly's builders. This is old. This is from like 5th century BC. Yeah, these bits look like they've been added in a bit later. Sicily's been invaded by so many people over the centuries that it's hard to keep track of who built what. Speaking of worshipping water... I want to be down there in the sea. <laughs> you look quite different from the Julian I met this morning having a, a coffee and a croissant. <laughs> oh. <laughs> completely different. Well, at least I made it to the summit before the end of the trip. And despite being ready to flop into bed, Angelo has arranged one last farewell feast for us at one of their villas with one of their private chefs. So we're going to have the experience of trying the hump cooking. <laughs> it's a nice experience that we organize often. Today I will cook traditional Sicilian recipe. And I put a little bit of white wine, olive oil. Very fresh fish. Super fresh. fresh. The local I market. can never get mine to look like that. <laughs> How do you do it? You need to, do, to find the right tomatoes, and then you need to cook very slow and take time. So we'll say around a couple of hours. The service we're offering is a great food experience to people coming in holiday. I think this kind of sharing the passion of food is fantastic. Salute! Salute! Bravo! This is pasta alla norma. With aubergine. Oh! Oh! Bravo, Nino! I want to stop filming and just eat this, actually. <laughs> Everyone seems to be having a pretty good time, though. I'm sad to be leaving Cefalo, and I can see why so many people wanted to invade, but I'm sure I'll be back again soon. Arrivederci, folks, and thanks for watching.